Well, we were talking about the battle for tech resources, shining a spotlight on Canada's mining industry and obviously fueling a lot of the stocks in that sector. Not long ago, there was a big focus on the growth of the cannabis industry. Our next guest helped to pioneer Canada's leading cannabis corporation, which uh, when you think about the industry has gone through a lot of ups and downs for the last couple of years for more in the business of cannabis. We're joined in studio by Bruce Linton, founder, former CEO of Canopy Growth, David George Kosh, who covers the cannabis sector, also joining us for the conversation. Bruce, nice to see you. Yeah, good to be back. Good to see David. Good to see you too, Bruce. You know, it's funny, uh, we are, I, I use the example of tech resources only yeah. because it, it, it shines a light on an industry or a business and the value of a business. And we had that conversation a couple of years ago with cannabis. What changed? Well, you know, even wind it back, I don't believe Canopy would have gone without being bankrupt if in 2013, 2014, resources were super boring. Remember, nobody, all those guys, they, they were like, I got nowhere to put my cash. Okay, I'll listen to the cannabis story. Because so not to go it too, just, it, too... Right, it goes up and down. So and the bankers were interested in your story. Well, they, you know. when it looks like uh, resource and extraction is dead, what next? My ship comes sailing by, load up with the cash, get going. Now we see the cycle. So everything's a cycle. I think they're overdone. And maybe we'll talk a little bit about some mm. of the spaces in the cannabis area that I think are super overdone. Uh, in terms of the institutional support, that's been something that's been considerably lacking yeah. in the space. And that's something that I remember several years ago we talked about, that kind of institutional interest in cannabis. TerraSend is looking to list on the TSX from the yeah. Canadian Securities Exchange, migrating to a bigger platform there. Do you think that that will move the needle in terms of seeing institutionals interested in U.S. cannabis companies listing on major exchanges? Well, I, I think it will if... TerraSend goes up. Now, what will cause TerraSend to trade up? I think two or three things. First, if they now qualify based on valuation and exchange to hold institutions, right? You, a lot of institutions can't buy the 50 cent stock on a little exchange. Second thing is if that news causes retail to say, whoa, whoa, somebody's sticking up a bit above the crowd, we know this trade has been driven by retail. All the original money was made by retail because no institution would play. I think retail's on the sideline. Third thing I would say is, if what it leads to is other international exchanges, if you wanted to be on the AIM and be a cannabis company from the U.S., forget it. Mm -hmm. So maybe there's going to be uh, LSC others that might open up because they see TSX as a senior and the senior welcomes them. I think that could be a, a big uh, indicator. You know, not to, uh, not to, these are apples and oranges talking about mining and cannabis, but just going back to the, you know, the big metal story in tech resources, yeah. we've already had uh, the finance minister weighing in on the importance of having these standout Canadian companies. Uh, but when it comes to Ottawa and the cannabis industry, it seems like a tense relationship. We hear it from the current management yeah. at Canopy. We hear it from, from Tilray as well, which just did a roll up, right? But, mm -hmm. you know, they're pretty vocal about their frustration with the way the industry works. Yeah, you know, I think it's been, uh, it's an odd file for Ottawa, right? We've been doing mining since this country existed, and probably cannabis for about as long, but not legally. Mm. And so it's been an odd file. If you were in Health Canada and put on the uh, cannabis file 70 years ago, it wasn't a great thing. And even as politicians, they're not sure if they should show up at the ribbon cutting or stay away. They're not sure where their voters stand on this, and I think it's pretty clear they're supportive, but it's, uh, it's been one of those things where... We're the first country in the, in the world to have a real market, a real lead. And you would think that would lead to things like um, maybe university chairs studying cannabinoids. And they would have federal funding and they'd be like a, a national... Not so much, right, David? No. And it's been one of those areas where they, they don't know when they should push and when they should not. And the mm. effect is others are passing us. Mm. So is that a stigma that, that the government is, is looking to uh, or needs to address? in terms of supporting the cannabis industry here in Canada? I think it is a stigma. Like, if you look at it, you, David, you've been around as long as I have at this. The packaging and branding and positioning under the medical cannabis system was far more interesting, exciting, and possible than it is under REC. Leafs by Snoop was available under medical. It is not under its LBS, for example, under the REC. So there's just a couple of cycles, but I think those are, I'd say those are the smaller things. The reality is, is that um, we were so overheated. Right, like when that first joint was sold a few years back, we had more coverage on Canada until maybe, uh, you know, some guys parked their trucks in front of Parliament Hill. Like it literally was the most shining light, which caused things to get very hot. I think they're too cold now. So if people are investing in this sector and they're curious because it has been a, it has been a rocky ride, what are the reasons to be optimistic? Well, you, you have to pick where you want to be optimistic. Mm. So originally you had to grow the cannabis if you wanted to sell it. So everybody who was a grower got valued highly. We did. Then you had to turn it into products so you could go to market. That was a niche. 
I didn't like retail for a while because, you know, there was too numerous. I actually look at a couple of retail stocks now and say, like, I don't know if you've tracked these guys at all, but when I look at things like Canna Cabana is always busy. Canna Cabana has a whole bunch of people on there, a million people on their subscription list, and they're not trying to be convenience, they're trying to be discounts so they get volume. I look at a stock like that, and it's trading at, what, 25% of their top line sales, and if you backed out their operating costs uh, in terms of new buildings, they're profitable. That's nuts to me. Now I like, I like retail. We've seen some cooling from the American side of things as well with the lack of legalization yeah. efforts on a federal level right. from the United States. Do you think that there's still any opportunities or do you see any opportunities in the American cannabis market right now? Or is that still going to be dormant for quite some time? So what you're seeing in the U.S. is some of these companies can't even pay their taxes. So it's called 280E, which means if you run a cannabis company in the U.S., you can't deduct the cost of running the company before you pay your taxes. It's kind of like being Al Capone. You have to pay taxes on everything. They can't pay their 280E tax bill and service debt at 12 or 15%. So they're saying, well, do I pay the IRS this quarter? So I think that's a, a big problem in the U.S. I look past it. I'm more interested in Europe. Mm -hmm. And Germany said, well, we're not sure about REC exactly, but we're going to crank it up on medical access, which is what Canada did in the run-up to REC. Mm. And so when Germany does that, you know, Czech Republic's doing that, you know that it's a green light in a lot more of those geographies. And so I'm more optimistic about short-term I'll call it triggers or catalysts in Europe than I am in the US. Well, just bring it home to Canada. We've seen consolidation. There's always that threat that some companies won't make it. Even yeah. bigger companies, I think there's these big questions that everybody's trying to figure out, including investors. How do you feel uh, about that? I mean, are you keeping tabs on, on your former company in Canopy? Well, I, I look because I feel sad for the people who don't have jobs. Um, you know, I think they've had three years where every consecutive quarter they've sold less cannabis. Mm. The market over that three-year period, what's it gone from about $2 billion to $4.5 billion? Mm -hmm. And so I worry about the ones that aren't making sales. Now, I look at a place like Organogram, they're doing a pretty good job of growing share. And mm -hmm. so there are going to be winners and losers. Uh, I think the reckoning is going to be they keep kicking the Canada a couple of these places on servicing the debt obligation. That's not going to be a forever thing. So if stocks don't go up, the ones with big debt, really which are Tilray and Canopy, if you've got a lot of debt and you can't service it, that becomes a big headache soon. Well, on that note, I know Canopy's looking to ring fence its U.S. business, but the Canadian operations, do you think that that's something that the company could eventually declare bankruptcy for? It'd be hard. You know, it's a bit like the uh, battle they're having now. Remember, Field Trip was going to be a big thing, and then they spun off their clinics, and now they're having a battle between the IP and the other. I don't know how you do that without saying to one group of shareholders saying to the other, I'm hard done by. Mm -hmm. I think it's either all going to have to float right. or it's not.